Welcome to the house of the Lord, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida. I'm Pastor David Rose now. I thank the Lord to have this privilege of spending time together with you, being fed and strengthened by God's word. God bless our time together. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll offer the prayer of the day. O God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message is recorded in 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, open now my heart to hear and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. I was in my office this Friday afternoon working on this sermon when I saw a couple pull into the parking lot on a motorcycle in pouring rain. I went out and waved them over to come and pull up underneath the small little canopy by the front doors. I thought the least I could do was help them get out of the rain, but the Lord had something different in mind all along. They were on their way from Wisconsin down south through Florida, and just by chance, was it by chance, (laughs) they pulled into our lot at that time of the day and when I was here. In our conversation, we learned that He and I had both been in law enforcement, he having retired after almost 30 years, and that we had both worked in similar fields. I also learned that he had been suffering quietly for the past 20 years with an illness that was not visible to anyone around him, but was taking a heavy toll on him, physically, emotionally, and mentally. He said, I look like the strong one, but my wife is the strong one because sometimes I have days 
when I just want God to take my life. I said, I am working on a sermon this very moment about another man who'd had enough. And I'm just trying to decide what the theme should be. I'm trying to decide between I've had enough or Lord, it's too much for me. And he said, both. (laughs) The Old Testament prophet Elijah looked strong on the outside with a long career of accomplishments for the Lord. Yet God records this day in his life that Elijah said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. This is not a coincidence either. This is a timely message from our loving God who gives strength and encouragement in our time of need. May God richly bless our time in this word. God called Elijah to serve as his prophet during one of the reigns of the, one of the worst kings Israel ever had, the wicked king Ahab. The only person who was worse than Ahab was his evil wife Jezebel. The Bible tells us that Ahab did more to provoke the Lord to anger than in all the kings of Israel before him. The Lord sent Elijah to get Ahab's attention. Elijah told Ahab that there would be no rain, not even dew in the morning, for years until Elijah asked God to send rain. That caused a severe drought and famine. But instead of turning back to God, Jezebel started hunting down the prophets of God and killing them. But God kept Elijah alive through one miracle after another. One time he kept Elijah alive by hiding him by a brook and sending ravens to bring him food in the morning and food at night. When the brook dried up, God directed Elijah to go stay with a widow and her son who had only enough flour and oil to bake one last cake of bread. But in the three years that Elijah stayed with them, that oil and flour never ran dry. And when the widow's son died, God gave Elijah power to raise her son back to life again. Elijah saw the power of God at work in his life and in others, sometimes quietly and sometimes, like the day on Mount Carmel, for all the world to see. That was the day that Elijah told King Ahab, enough is enough. Bring your 450 prophets of your imaginary God Baal and Jezebel's 400 prophets of her imaginary goddess Asherah and meet me on Mount Carmel. Each one of us will build an altar and each one of us will put a bull on the altar. If Baal consumes your sacrifice, then the people of Israel can all follow Baal. But if the Lord consumes my sacrifice, then everyone will know the Lord is God. The prophets of Baal called on him from morning until noon, but there was no answer. They danced around the altar, still nothing. At noon, Elijah said, maybe you need to shout louder. Maybe he's sleeping and you need to wake him up. Maybe he's busy or maybe he's traveling. They shouted all the louder, but still nothing, and there never would be. They cut themselves with swords and spears until blood flowed, but there was no answer. Then Elijah said, my turn. He repaired the altar of the Lord, made with 12 stones, one for each tribe of Israel. He dug a trench around it. He arranged the wood. He cut the bowl into pieces and laid it upon the wood. And then he ordered someone to take four large jars and go fill them with water and pour that all over his offering. He had them do it a second time. He had them do it a third time. The water soaked the wood and ran down the altar and filled the trench that he had dug around it. Then Elijah asked God to show that he is 
the one and only true God. That moment, God sent fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, consumed the stones, consumed the soil, and licked up all the water in the trench around it. The people of Israel fell on their face and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Elijah ordered them to seize the prophets of Baal and kill them. Then he prayed for God to send rain, and it poured. When Jezebel heard what Elijah had done, she said, I'm going to kill him. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. After all he had seen God do, after all God had done through him, how could Elijah get so low that he didn't want to live one more day? By the power and grace of God, Elijah did great things. But Elijah was human, a sinful human, living in a sinful world, surrounded by sinful people. Sometimes I hear people say, it's okay, Pastor, I know the Lord's never going to give me more than I can handle. But he does. He did for Elijah, and he does for us, for a loving purpose. The Lord loves to hold us close to him in our thoughts and in our prayers. When it is too much for us, we must turn to him. Now we might make a foolish mistake of turning to a whole bunch of things other than him, but he's the only one who can give us what we truly need. As long as we are plagued with our sinful nature, and as long as we live in a sinful world, we are going to have moments that we forget all that God can and will do for us. Sometimes we will wonder what good can come of this hurt or this illness or this suffering or this challenge. Or how long will the Lord allow it to continue before he grants some relief? But disappointment, discouragement, and trouble that goes on and on do not prove that God is not with us or that God does not love us. The Lord knows when we've had enough. The Lord knows when it is too much for us. He did with Elijah. And he sent an angel to feed him and give him strength that was not his own. The Lord gives you food to strengthen you when you feel like you've had enough too. To be your help when you feel helpless. To be your hope when you feel helpless. Or hopeless. He can send angels to feed you if he thinks that's what you need or that's what would be best. But we know for a fact that each and every day he sends his Holy Spirit to give you the bread of life. He feeds you with his powerful, living, and active word and gives strength to weary bodies and comfort to hurting hearts. He gives you his body and blood together with the bread and the wine in the miracle meal of his holy supper to give you peace for your restless soul. The Lord knows what it is to hurt. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3, God says he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. That's talking about the Lord. What's more amazing to me about that is that God wrote that 700 years before Jesus was born. The Lord knew what it would cost him and what he must suffer to enter into our world to rescue us from an eternity of suffering. He gave his perfect life to pay for our very not perfect life, 
He washed us clean of all our sins. He removed our guilt. He removed our punishment. He took it all upon himself because he knew it was too much for us. And he said, it's not too much for me. When Joe and Deb pulled under the canopy, they said that the radar showed rain for the next four hours. When they went to leave, I asked, what did it show now? Deb pulled out her phone and looked and smiled. (laughs) She said, it shows clear till nine o'clock tonight. (laughs) They are convinced that God directed them to pull in here, and I am too, for the conversation that we had and for the strength and encouragement that the Lord had to give them through his word and through this word. Joe said, God had me pull in here to give me hope. I haven't had that for a while. Thank you. (laughs) Joe and Deb, as you're watching this, I say thank you with you. I say thank you, Lord, for this reminder, for this encouragement, and for this hope. Dear Christian, there may be a day and another day after that and another day after that when you might think or feel or even say, Lord, I've had enough. It's too much for me. Remember he allowed too much for Elijah too to remind him to rely on God's strength and God's power and God's promises. So don't give up. You might have some rough days ahead, but the Lord is with you now just as much as he was with Elijah then. So like the angel told Elijah, get up and eat. Each new day, get up and eat and drink the bread and water of life. Strengthened by this heavenly food and called by his amazing grace, we too will reach the mountain of God. We won't find any disappointment or discouragement or hunger or illness or pain or sorrow there. It might not be on a chariot of fire like God sent to bring Elijah home. It might not be on a big old Harley Davidson like Joe and Deb rode in on, but it will be the best trip of our life. And the Lord has done everything we need to get us there because nothing is too much for him. (laughs) Amen. I'm going to share another prayer and then I'll invite you to join together with me and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this reminder from your word to turn to you again and again and again for strength and encouragement through all our days here. We can so quickly forget that this life and this world are not our true home. Strengthen us with your word and sacraments and keep our hearts and our eyes lifted up and focused on you until that great and glorious day we will see you in heaven. Work through your word and give hope to the hopeless and help to the helpless. Please watch over our country. Protect all who serve in the United States military and those who are working to provide health and public safety. For all of this and more, we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Wasn't this great? The Lord is so good to us. He knows what we need to hear, when we need to hear it, and he's always there to feed us and to strengthen us. I pray that this will be a lasting encouragement for you, dear Christian. Sometimes it's just too much for us, but it's never too much for him. God continue to be with you. I pray, will you please share this with somebody that might not know this strength that they have right at their fingertips that the Lord has for them. You can share it with them. Maybe just forward a, a, a link to the YouTube channel or forward my email if that's what you get or ask them to subscribe. If they will, they'll get a notification each time I post each new service. That's all that'll happen. God be with you. God bless and keep you safe. And Lord willing, I'll see you real soon.